probably remember the time when you were at school and you were really nervous going from primary school to secondary school. Hello, I'm the Ginger Mathematician and I'm going to go through the key tips that you need to prepare yourself for the transition from year six to year seven in mathematics. Stay tuned. So let's get straight to it, okay? How can you prepare yourself to go from year six mathematics to year seven mathematics? And if you focus on these ideas, these rules, you will go far in year seven, okay? Whether that's yourself or you're watching for your own son or daughter. So number one is that number skill matters. So this is why in primary schools, particularly year five and year six, there is a great focus on number skills. Now, what do I mean by number skills? I mean, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. I mean, working with fractions, basic work with percentages, um, working with those worded problems. So using money involved, things like this. And you really need to have those skills really, really secure. Because one of the things that you will do in year seven in some shape or form is do some work on algebra. And in order to get a really good successful start at algebra, you need to have those number skills really, really secure. So for example, if I'm trying to do 7x minus 5x, then that's going to be equal to 2x. Again, that's the same question as asking essentially, 7 minus 5 is equal to 2. So by having those number skills secure, you can then attempt algebraic topics that much easier, which is what you'll see much more in secondary school. Okay, and my number two is regular and often. And this doesn't just apply for mathematics, but if you're learning a language, if you're learning any skill that you need to improve, you need to be doing it regular and often. And the transition from year six to year seven, often you always have that teacher presence there for regardless what subject it is. And then you can always ask questions. You, know, you can ask a maths question in a English lesson and vice versa. Whereas at secondary school, you have individual teachers, ex experts essentially, for each of your subjects. And this is where you have to get organized. So from a maths point of view, you need to be doing that regular homework, whether that's set by your teacher or that's actually something that you complete at home yourself. Now, I would certainly aim for doing about 40 minutes per week to make sure you're really consolidating everything that you're doing in your new mathematics lessons. And one thing extra you could also do as well is before you go back, so that week before you go back to school, do some regular maths. There's plenty of great content out there. I'm going to show you some of the content over here. So you've got a bit of choice. Uh, you can use My iMaths. You can use Go Teach Maths. You've lots of different websites out there for you. And by getting a little bit of extra practice beforehand and that regular practice throughout the academic year, you will certainly go far with your maths. And my last point here is really more for the parents uh, amongst you watching my video here, and that is to get the scheme of learning from the secondary school and make sure you know what your child is doing every single week because the schemes of learning can differ quite considerably for secondary and there's many different reasons for that. Uh, for example, uh, the school that I'm head of department in, we do the IGCSE 0607 and IB, which is an interesting uh, combination, whereas some schools may do the just GCSE, they may do the IG, GCSE. They may even do the NYP program if you're at other international schools around the world. So you need to find that scheme of learning, see what order and topics they also teach as well, and make sure that you're talking to your child uh, every week and saying, okay, what are you doing with sequences? If they're doing sequences that week, uh, or if they're doing probability or a different topic. And some schools will also divide up slightly differently. So uh, the way I would do it, for example, is I'd spend a good two, three weeks on each topic. Uh, some schools will do it more on a weekly basis and keep jumping from topic to topic so it keeps everything fresh so there are many different approaches and by getting that scheme of learning from your school you'll have a very good idea of how the head of department has actually structured the maths course in year seven and that's really really vital if you're coming from a white rose scheme of learning you might find your new school also does white rose maths as well which means it'll be a much easier transition going from year six to year seven but if uh, there are two different kinds of systems or different ways of doing schemes of learning from year six to year seven you need to find that you need to talk to your teacher and then you've got a good idea of how to prepare your child as well as you're doing homework together or you're talking through the maths you've done that week
Okay, so those are my three key points. Number one, number skills matter. Make sure you've got those number skills really, really secure. Practice what you've done in year six, practice what you've done in year five, ready for that year seven secondary maths. Make sure you do that. Number two is regular and often. It's great advice. It will keep you on top of your workload as the workload will increase going into year seven. And by doing that regular and often mathematics practice, you'll feel much comfortable when those end of year exams come around. And then, of course, number three is get that scheme of learning from your teacher or the head department so you know exactly what order they're teaching in, how they're teaching different topics, and then you've got the best possible preparation for year seven when you get there. All right, best of luck, and hopefully you will enjoy year seven maths. And if you're a parent, hopefully your child will also enjoy maths as well. All right, bye-bye for now.